Hi, I'm Gabby, and welcome to Gabbing with Gabby. In this series, we sit down with fellow artists who brought their knowledge and talent to the world via the internet. It's a chance for them to put down their brushes, to step away from their easels, and to talk about themselves. And it's also a great chance for all of us to get to know them better. Our guest today is Maz. Maz, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Marion Dutton, and I run Maz Art Academy uh, over in the UK, although Maz Art Academy is um, it's an online business, so of course you can access all of the tutorials online. But uh, but yeah, that's me. i kind of been teaching for, gosh, 15 years, so absolutely love it, and it keeps me, you know, from doing a proper job, as I always say. Um, <laughs> it is, it's, you know, I just love doing what I do, so, and I feel very, very blessed and honoured that I'm able to do this job, so... Yeah. yeah. And you definitely have the talent for it. So oh, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's you know, talent is a funny, it's funny really, isn't it? Because I don't always feel like talent is maybe you were inclined towards something as opposed to having a talent. Um, because when I first started, some of my paintings were absolutely horrific, but I had enough of a love of doing what I was doing, um, and enough of an inclination towards doing that that I was able to continue. And this is where we are today. So it's an interesting journey. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so what type of medias do you like to use? Oh, so I actually started, I mean, my first love is oil paints, um, but I actually started painting. When I say started, I did it at school like most of us do. And then, you know, left school, went on and had a life and kind of came back to it much later. I was about 36 when I restarted or, or re uh, sort of found an interest in it um, so I hadn't done anything from sort of about 17 to, to 36. One of my daughters was doing a school project and so I got some stuff wondering if I'm still able to draw I didn't know if I could still do it so I thought right well I'll get some stuff and the kids my, I've got three children I said children now they're all grown up um, but they were all starting to grow up a little bit and I thought I wonder if I can still do it so I started doing that but I got into acrylics to begin with um, just feeling like at the time like I don't know enough about oils there seems to be a lot of stuff you have to learn so acrylics was just paint and water you know so that's how I started and then from there started with oils and for a long long time stayed with oils and these days I'm back to acrylics I'm doing I love acrylics almost as much I think all oils will always have the the edge um, but I also use watercolor so and I'm doing oil over watercolor I'm doing oil over acrylic I'm doing mixed media so kind of a bit of everything I don't like to be put in a box so yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. I'm an algorithm nightmare actually Gabby because I don't ever stick to just one thing I, I enjoy all of it so much so um you know I kind of just play around with it a little bit uh, awesome. so yeah pretty much everything <laughs> yeah um what do you like to do for subjects so again my subjects are varied I'm probably best known for my pet portraits and my portraits that's probably what I would class as my flagship um, products if you like but I do every literally everything I do birds I do landscapes I do flowers and pretty much anything in different mediums so the nice thing about my online academy these days is I'm able to paint things and just put them out there and then people can join in or not depending on what they're actually interested in so um, I'm really hard to kind of pin because I just like such a lot of things so but I, again if I had to pick one subject one medium it would be pet portraits and it would be oils so that kind of is is where I sort of launch from if you like. Mm -hmm. That is such a wide variety of talent that's impressive. Yeah, it it well, is. I just again I just I mean tomorrow we've got a I've got a live class this is what we're doing tomorrow so now this will be in oils um, and we'll be doing that one as a live workshop so what I do with the live classes is I prepare do a pre-recorded preparation video that goes on so people can get the canvas ready get the tracings on do all that and then join me live and we'll we'll paint the rest of it together in oils so it's kind of nice doing it it's a nice way of doing it really so again I've got such a huge variety of different subjects but tomorrow is flowers so you know I like it all so I don't want to pick <laughs> right yeah who, who said we ever had to you know artists yeah. exactly it is, so yeah. it's you what know. you want it to be yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so how many pieces in the time that you have been doing art as an adult, how many pieces do you think you've done? Oh, my goodness. 
I couldn't even put a number on it, I don't think. I paint. I mean, I'm actually sat here with around me just in case you needed to have a look at anything. I've got about eight pieces just sat here around me, and these have probably all been done in the last couple of weeks. So I paint very quickly, um, you know, and I work on several pieces at any one time because there's always different, like, you know, I work with like a, a burnt umber underpainting on one, and while that's drying, I'll be working on something else. So hundreds, thousands, I would say. Mm -hmm. over the you know certainly over the last 10 years um, mm -hmm. and of course I'm teaching so I pre-paint something um, so if I'm doing the flowers for example these flowers I've obviously painted them and then tomorrow I'll be painting them again so I can often have multiple versions <laughs> of the same subject kind of dotted around a little bit so mm -hmm. I couldn't even put a number on it I paint a lot yeah a lot yeah. I actually believe that's the key is just to keep doing the groundwork really and getting the you know getting those numbers and and just keep whether you do it on paper or boards or you know I highly recommend people doing it on canvas paper to begin with just getting just producing and producing because you'll only get better from doing the do <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah yeah um what do you have sitting around you that you can show us oh right okay you. so right so I have oh I've got um three ladies coming over next week for a four day from the US. So they're flying over to do four days with me. I've not taught in studio for nearly 12 months. So I'm really super excited to actually have humans here, <laughs> you know, actually here in the studio. And um, so they're coming next week and one of the, they want to work completely in acrylics. They're actually watercolorists. One's an oil painter, the other two are acrylics, uh, sorry, watercolorists. And they want to all deep dive into acrylics. So we're having a four-day acrylic session and this will be one of them <laughs> so it's just a lovely cute painting uh we've got i think this week they'll be wanting a fox they want some clouds so we've got quite a variety on um coming up in july i have this one which is a really lovely kind of landscapey now the preparation tutorial is already on my system for this one and we will paint the rest of it live you know the dress and the sky and the trees and all the little foliage down here so we've called this one the milk maiden so that one's coming up in july um and then this is one i've just put out so a little portrait i know so this was done i've actually put a little thing together this was done using the underpainting i hope this actually appears you'll have to let me know so i start with an underpainting is that showing yes yes it is and then from there we build the layers and then we end with the final sort of painting and that's really how I kind of teach portraits and pet, the pets are done very very similar um, which I think I've got something here that's an underpainting followed by the colours and so on and um, so those are kind of longer form paintings whereas something like the milk maiden we kind of there's a little bit of an underpainting and then we finish it in one sort of two hour um, painting slot which is kind of nice it's good fun so um you know the online stuff and um, what else do i have i've got this one was one we did in february which is all acrylic um i think i've shown you did i show you this one and this one was done over a couple of weeks using the underpainting technique which was yes yeah, so we start with the underpainting like that and then over a couple of weeks, we, you know, over, I think we did three weekly sessions of about two hours each on the live classes. So they are good fun because obviously it's the same people tuning in each week and um, just really good banter. And they can talk to me via the chat. My partner, Gary, sits in the studio and he's monitoring the chat and shouting the questions out to me. Um, so that's kind of good. They're good fun. So I do enjoy them. I was a bit nervous when I first started doing the lives because obviously you've got to learn all this new equipment stuff that we have to kind of get our head around. Um, but once now I've kind of been doing them about six months, really, really look forward to doing them. So they're good fun. Wow. So where did you where did you learn to do a lot of this? Did you teach yourself or did you take classes? I mean, the the um all of the the you know the stuff that you do for the live classes I literally partly because I have a my partner Gary's like you're OCD so I can be a bit intense um so of course I was having films done prior to COVID but I had somebody coming in and doing them for me a, a lovely guy called Paul and he used to do all the filming I just paint and then he went away and made me a film you know and then of course COVID hits and everything changes so we've had to kind of adapt um, but of course with COVID as well I won't do a classes stopped overnight everything changed for all of us really um, and we 
just have had to learn to adapt. But I also found that I ended up with a lot of time on my hands because I weren't teaching anymore. So I just got my head down. I've done a couple of online courses, um, you know, where I bought something from a YouTuber or something and learned things like that. But mostly it's just self-taught and, and getting up, you know, just cracking on with it. I've learned how to do all these lovely blurry backgrounds and you know I've got a stream deck here which honestly if you don't have one I don't think I'd be able to show you without so can you see that mm -hmm. yep oh interesting this is, oh this is the best thing in the world if you're interested in <laughs> anything like that it's the best thing because from there I've got a camera that is pointing on my painting I have one on me um, this is when I'm doing the live classes. I have one on me, I have one on my palette, and then I have a fourth one on like a side shot for the paintings, and it's all controlled here. So I'm literally, I do it all on my own. So it's, yeah, it was stressful at the beginning, but I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Now I'm into it and I kind of know what I'm doing. It, you know, it's like anything, once you know how, you can start to relax and actually enjoy the, the whole process. I find it fascinating that we're able to reach people the way we can these days. I think it's absolutely amazing. So I have a lot of people, of course, a lot of people following following me in the US and um, that couldn't possibly come to classes. So this is a great way of connecting and teaching and, and doing things like that. So really enjoying it <laughs> yeah. wow. complicated but so cool and you're right the the things we can do nowadays is just oh, unbelievable it yeah. really is and, and it just keeps changing all the time so you've kind of got to be I'm pretty geek I didn't realize how much of a techie geek I've become but I have actually over these last few years you know I'm sort of like oh new gadget you know so <laughs> it's kind of I wouldn't say it's taken over the painting you know you want toys for your painting it's kind mm -hmm. of on par with it in a lot of ways so um mm -hmm. you know it is it's good fun to to play around with these things so mm -hmm. What took you from being an artist to being a teacher? So interesting. Um, I had no intentions of teaching. It was never on my radar at all. So I originally, like a lot of us, the Bob Ross and Bill Alexander, that's how I kind of got started. It was actually um, Daryl Crow did a video um, of a waterfall. And I remember him and he did the noises, the, tsh, you know, he did all that with the brush, the fan brush. And I watched him paint a waterfall on a black canvas and was absolutely blown away. Because by then I'd been doing a little bit of drawing and things like that. So I ended up investigating the Bob Ross courses. Um, and but then ended up somehow, I think it was just going away from home. I had young children at the time. Um, the Bill Alexander one was online. So I was able to do the Bill Alexander one, um, just sort of submit, submit my work online. It was a great course, but the last two, the last assignment was to do two workshops. And I was a bit like, OK, I'll just get my friends over. We'll have a few drinks and things. But in the end, I sort of thought, no, I'm going to do this properly. So I made a little poster and I posted it in the local chippy and the local post office. And by the time I drove up, it was just for, for I had a, I used to do sewing as well, um, making curtains and things like that. And I had a ping pong table that I used to use as a, like a sewing table. And I thought I could get six people around this table. So that's what I advertised, free class. And why is it free? Well, you're helping me get my certification. By the time I'd got home, the class was booked. And I was a bit like, whoa, that's amazing. But obviously it's because it's, it's free, isn't it? That's why it's booked. I thoroughly enjoyed the workshops, teaching them and everybody produced a great painting and I was able to submit that. And then I think that was July 2011, I got my certification for the Bill Alexander. So by the September, I thought, well, I'll advertise classes, but I'll charge for them. We'll see what happens. And they kept filling wow. and they kept filling and they kept filling. And that was it. That's how it started. So from actually just not really intending to teach to just really, really enjoying it. Um, and that was the point I really did enjoy having people around and showing them what, you know, what I could do. And I look back now to 2011 and where I am today, you know, I can do so much, you know, my, my lessons are better. And But at the time I was showing people something they couldn't do and it was just really enjoyable. So, um, you know, and that's just grown from there, really. Wow. That's so crazy. It is. Yeah, what a smart, it really what a smart is. idea too to just like, you know, do it free because that's a great way to start. But yeah, yeah, you know, just 
I, I was lucky enough. I had this little where I lived. It was an out like an outbuilding, so I weren't having to worry about paying rent or anything like that. It was my own little originally my own little sort of sewing room. Like I said, I had this big ping pong table in there, this big sort of um, you know nine foot ping pong table that I used to use for for doing my curtain making and things like that. I used to sort of spread my curtains on there, and I just put six people around this table, um, and it, it just kept they just kept filling. So from there, it just kind of grew really and here we are today you know doing online classes and YouTube and I would never believe it if you'd have told me at the time I never would have thought this could have even been possible so and then in 20 is it 2016 17 I was invited over to the US and I taught over there so I've actually taught um, four classes over there portrait uh, pet portrait classes so that was an amazing moment to walk in and I did get a lovely round of applause from everyone but I was my voice broke and I was shaking and I was so so nervous about meeting everybody and kept thinking why are all these people coming to, to my classes um, but they just you know and from there I've made some amazing friends JD Wayne and I know you had him on a few weeks ago so I've made some amazing friends um, over there who still you know they're following me I'm following in them and I just to me I think it's just such an amazing um like we're all sharing our knowledge and sharing and you know teaching and giving each other a bit of a leg up as well because let's face it, it's pretty hard earning an income from this art business you know if I, people look at me and go oh, she's super successful and I have I am but I also know that there's it's it's not easy you know it's not easy to I'm earning an income I'm not making millions <laughs> you know what I mean not that I particularly want to well I mean I'm not saying no <laughs> but you get what I'm saying it's it's an I earn an income from this and there are times when I think oh and it's very unpredictable so um you know I'm always willing to give other people other artists the students who come to me um I have a lot of students who are coming to want to do commission work and I really want to be able to give them that leg up if I can help I do so so to me, that's what I think it's all about, is that we all support one another, which is why I absolutely love what you're doing with your channel as well. I think it's amazing that you're having people on and giving people a chance to, to sit in the spotlight a little bit. I think it's great. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't say better. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, and I really do think, you know, we, we have an option. We can either be for ourselves or be for everybody else. And you're definitely yeah. going for everybody yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a, to me, I believe in collaboration rather than competition. Everybody's got something different that they're bringing to the table. We we all come at it differently. And um, there'll be people who resonate as students for me. They come to me because of the way I teach. But then there'll be others who think I don't it's not coming across so they prefer to learn from somebody else so we can't have we can't each just have everyone so there's definitely more than enough for us all so that's how I see it is is just to if I can share my knowledge and I know a lot of my students um who I've gone and done my course my big courses are now looking to do what I'm doing with the you know and I think that may be my next avenue is to be able to help people set things like this up as well you know um because it is difficult it can be you know I've spent sort of getting my head down for three four years and if I can give somebody a little bit of a help like stream decks <laughs> you know then I'm willing to do that you know yeah wow that's so cool um okay let me get back to my list of questions <laughs> I can talk by the way once I get going <laughs> which is totally fine um when you started doing art did you find anything particularly challenging um yeah, I, do you know, I think flowers was probably the the one thing. Actually, it wasn't so much the flowers as the leaves. Um, so when I first started, I seemed to be able to get these lovely, delicate petals, um, you know, but I, the leaves, my leaves were very clumpy and stumpy. And landscapes are still probably the lower thing on my list. I really, I enjoy them, but I think I always want to either put a person in them or, you know, something like that, sort of personalise it a little bit with a house or something like that. Just doing a landscape on its own doesn't always appeal to me. But I would say the thing that I really found difficult was um, the leaves more than anything when I was doing flowers. Uh, they drove me nuts. Mm -hmm. So uh, but weirdly, things like the animal, I think because I've always, if I go back to my school days, 
I was drawing horses and dogs and my mum's got a picture which I've actually got now she's given it me uh, what she found that I'd drawn for my auntie of an Alsatian and I'd drawn it all freehand wasn't it a little little um, drawing um, but it, I look at it and think god I was 11 when I did that and it it was good <laughs> Do you know for an 11 year old it was really good so the animals have always been part of what I've done I've always I mean I, I have two little cavaliers um proper dog lovers so um always drawing dogs and horses and things like that so they've never really been a problem for me when I first started it was I was just going to do pet portraits I had no intentions of doing people and then I just evolved from there and started doing portraits and things. So using the same methods that I was using for the pets. Mm -hmm. Did that come from originally like something that somebody wanted you to do for them or was it something yeah. that you just, yeah. Yeah. So like I said, originally pre doing the Alexander course, my big plan was, it, it was actually called Mazart Pet Portraits. Um, it was never as it, over time, it just evolved. The name just kept changing a little bit because my big plan was just to sit in my little, you know, my little uh, sewing room and paint, be inundated with pet portrait commissions with my little dog, you know, and that was going to be my life. But this would have been sort of back in 2008. And there was a bit of a recession on at the time and nobody was doing commission. Nobody was doing uh you know pet portrait commissions and it just weren't happening at all so that's how I ended up sort of keep going down the line um 2010 I think so um and that's when I started sort of branching out a little bit and looking at other things like the Alexander courses and things so and since then I do have the I am Bob Ross floral certified and landscape certified I obviously have the Bill Alexander certified um I've done portrait courses with Valerie Stewart as well I've painted with Jerry Yarnell I've painted with Robert War. I've literally gone all over to paint with different people so I feel like I'm a mishmash of of everything that we have we all are really at the end of the day we pick up things from from everybody so yeah and that's a question <laughs> I was just wondering if you had started from you know a commission because I think you know a lot of times I've gotten pushed into doing stuff I never would have done if it hadn't yeah. been for somebody coming to me and yeah. being like can you do this and I'm like yeah okay I'll try <laughs> yeah exactly I mean all the best places are outside of the comfort zone aren't they at the end of the day um but yeah that's exactly it. like I said it was just going to be pet portraits and then someone said can you do this and I don't know they were paying a, a reasonable fee at the time and I was just like well I'll have a go <laughs> you know so you know and then from there you just develop it and and things and and then I've painted all my children I've done them several times throughout their you know their as they've been growing up and you start to get your confidence because you're doing something personal and you're not necessarily sharing it with the world. It's just for yourself. And then you think, oh, that's actually quite good. Family starts seeing it. And, you know, from there, it just grows, really. So we all start somewhere. You know, where I am today is not where I was, um, you know, 12, 15 years ago. Actually, Gabby, I have. I'm going to show you my first pet portrait. I actually found it and I thought it would be a really interesting. So this is my little dog, Jerry, who's no longer with us now. Uh, but this was my very first pet portrait. Now, I was thrilled with this and I remember taking it and showing it a friend and she was like, mm, it's not bad. And I was really offended. <laughs> But this is where I am. Let me see if I can find it. So this is my two little doggies now. And this is more of a life size kind of portrait that is hanging in our hallway, which I'm extremely proud of. Um, and that's my two little boys now. So they're a little bit older these days. So <laughs> they're about they're nearly 10. So um, but it just shows you that um, where we start as long as you just keep going and I see so many now students coming to me going oh I'm never going to I'm never going to be that and I'm never going to be this and like I could have stopped there I could have stopped at that point when my friend said mm, it doesn't quite look like Jerry I could have stopped and thought oh I'm no good at this but I enjoyed it and I kept going so I think you kind of have to be you have to enjoy it. You have to keep wanting to push yourself that little bit further and, and just know that the progress comes from putting those hours in. So is it Malcolm Gladwell who said the 10,000 hour rule? There's no getting around it. There's no kind of getting around. There's no shortcuts at all. So mm -hmm. and why would you want any anyway? So, yeah, you know. You know, I think sometimes people just want to have it right away, but it's yeah. you just can't compare yourself to what other people can do. No, you can't. You can't look at where I am 15 years down the line of painting almost daily. You know, I paint a lot. So and there's a lot of people, obviously, who are working who can maybe only paint once a week. But I'm doing seven days a week 
and I've been doing that probably for close to, you know, ten, definitely the last 10 years. The first five years, I think I was still doing part time work. And then eventually I just put all my energy into this. And, you know, I paint almost every day. It's very, very rare that I'm not in this room. I absolutely love being in here. So um, how can you compare somebody who's put in seven, you know, seven days a week in and for 10, 15 years and you're doing one day a week or even one hour a week? But you still as long as you're enjoying that and you want to move forward, you will do. You will do. It's just more about just finding that time for yourself, really, I think. And, you know, it's they call it self-love and things like that, all this stuff that sort of branded about these days. But actually just putting that time aside to dedicate for yourself, I think is super, super important. You know, I know it's not easy for a lot of people, but you have to care enough about yourself to say, I want at least half a day on this or at least a few hours each week on this to to progress. So, like I said, there are no shortcuts, really. The, the only way to get better is through the doing, mm -hmm. you know, and that I, I often say to students, you know, because obviously when they come on my academy, I'm providing the tracing and this, that. And then I always say to them, please don't just watch the video, download the tracing and paint because mm -hmm. It, you won't gain as much just watching me as you will actually doing, you know, the courses or the lessons and things like that. So, um, you know, like I said, there's no shortcuts. We kind of just have to do the mileage, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Do you have a specific point of pride in the work that you've done? Is there anything that really stands out to you that makes you proud? Oh, well, beyond the obviously the the one painting of my two dogs that I absolutely adore. I do love that painting because I know when the boys are no longer with me, I will always have that to to treasure. But actually, if I'm really honest, it's more about the students. When I see people coming to me and saying, you've changed or because of your lessons, I've done this or I'm now doing commissions and you know, I wouldn't have done that had I not done your pet portrait course, but I'm now doing commissions and, and things like that. I run, um, obviously we have our academy, but I also run a, a Facebook group as well, uh, which is basically for anybody who is using my methods, the, the underpainting technique. So if they have got a commission and they're struggling with it, they can post on there and get a little bit of feedback and a bit of advice and things like that. So that to me is absolutely thrilling, you know, and I know I've had a few people who've done uh, memorial portraits, whether that's been a person or a pet, and that's then meant something to the, the recipient. And I always think, God, that's kind of filtered through me somehow because of the courses and the way I've taught them. They're now doing this. So, you know, I, things like that, I think, is the biggest source of pride for me is what my students are achieving because of something I've done, which I just it just blows my mind, really. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's awesome. That's inspiring. That's inspiring. <laughs> Um, OK, let's see. It's always it's always about the students, I think, Gabby, is because when you've got to a certain point yourself, I think after that, it really is more about how can you share that with other people and spread what the, the thrill I get from a painting. And I am somebody who still falls in love with the painting. You know, I'm not so blasé about it. I will carry a picture into the lounge with me and put it on the, the, you know, the fireplace while I'm watching TV and be glancing and thinking, I did that. I'm so proud of that you know so if I have that thrill and yet I know that some of my students are also feeling that they they come and they sit in there and they're looking at what they've done and think I've made that I think it's it's just wonderful so that to me is the the biggest source of pride mm -hmm. so and going over to America to teach just I mean that absolutely blew my mind that people that class those classes got filled and they booked and it, it was crazy for me so yeah I was it was one of the most emotional moments was walking into that classroom that time for the first time and kind of thinking all these people have traveled over America to come and paint with me it yeah it was crazy mm -hmm. a lot of times I ask people what advice do you have for people who are getting started um but my question actually for you is what advice do you have for people who are getting stuck Oh, I think sometimes you, if you're completely stuck and it's frustrating you, sometimes taking a break is probably the best thing you can do, literally coming away from it, or try something new, you know, completely new. So this is the thing for me, I, you know, there are people who come to me and they're wanting to do pet portraits and portraits, and I'm introducing them to oil over watercolour, splashy backgrounds, and 
and it's you know and they're like oh, I'm not really interested in watercolor but actually since doing watercolor my oils are better than they've ever been so they're all it's all related but the looseness that you gain from one medium can somehow translate into another and before you know it you can end up with more of an opening if you like into the the your medium of choice so for me I do love oils oils are my number one first love but I love some of the watercolor techniques so let me just i'm kind of diverting slightly but for example this one so this is a watercolor background with oil on top and so i'm finding that because of these loose backgrounds and these loose and i'll show you another one this is another one using oil over watercolor so watercolor background and then oil with the dog and a lot of people don't realize you can paint on top of watercolor with oils there is a little bit of preparation needed but it can be done so my point being going to your question about being stuck sometimes change change direction slightly to come back with fresh eyes i think for me i was absolutely against watercolor hated it that wishy-washy stuff don't want to paint with it and now i have a new love for it i really do enjoy i've done a, a watercolor pet portrait course um so to me i enjoy all of it sometimes having a, a change or a break from being ugh, trying to get something done switch have a break from it come back with fresh eyes so that's how i would approach it i think mm -hmm. that's great advice that's really great advice um let's see what do you think about you makes you unique as an artist <laughs> well I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure what i think for me is that I, i'm an algorithm nightmare because i'm not uh, you know if you go on my youtube channel and it, it's chugging away nicely i think i'm at almost ninety three thousand, which is uh, you know awesome that that one hundred thousand is in sight but i think when i listen to advice about growing your youtube channel or growing your business it's all niche down niche down you know focus so i think if i was a portrait artist or a pet portrait artist my channel and algorithms would know exactly where to place me but in the end i wouldn't be true to myself so I feel like that's what makes me unique is I literally wake up the night before I'll plan and think, right, I'm going to underpaint that portrait and I'm going to do that. And I'll wake up and I think I'm doing a butterfly. <laughs> it completely changes. <laughs> it, and I just literally think I go with that and I follow that because that's what where my joy is. And for me, I have to certainly these days, I really feel like I have to follow my joy in order for and those who want that will follow me and we'll take it from there. So if it means that my YouTube channel grows really slow because, you know, I'm an algorithm nightmare and they don't know where to place me. So if I think my superpower or what makes me stand out, it's the fact that I love variety. I love playing. I love paint. And, you know, I'm willing to just try and I'm never afraid of ruining a painting. I don't care that much if it's ruined it's like oh, what did I learn from that oh but I like how that background did this or I like how some you know something happens um the oil over watercolor kind of came about with me watching a few YouTube and thinking I wonder if I can mix my portraits with this lovely splishy splashy background which I adore on watercolor paintings and so that's how that kind of you know came about is to sort of marry those two techniques I love that abstract meets realism um and things like that so yeah, I think what makes me different is I just will have a go at absolutely anything and love all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I, I might be wrong, but somebody told me once that watercolor actually came from people going out and doing plein air painting and just doing kind of an outline with a watercolor and then coming yeah. back to the studio to oil paint it. So, yeah, yeah. I watched a video. Um, it's a guy called Bill Inman and the 19th century British painters um, used to use watercolor as a quick underpainting for plain air painting and they would use the watercolor as a quick blocking and then go over the top while they're outdoors with oils so oil over watercolor is it's not new it has gone back you know as dated and what a lot of people don't realize as well we're quite common using oil over acrylic but actually acrylic can take up to three days to to cure um even though it looks like it's dry you've run over the hair dryer with it and i've done it myself uh, and then gone over the top with oils the actual reality of it you should leave it a couple of days before you paint over the top of it for it to fully cure um whereas you don't have that issue at all with watercolor you can just do some washes i've actually just done a recent i haven't got a picture of it because i've just dropped it off but i've just done a recent commission where i actually underpainted using my burnt umber technique but it was actually with watercolor 
so I was able on the same day to do my underpainting and get my first colour layers on. So, um, yeah, you can definitely use watercolour as an underpainting. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very good fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And quick. It's very immediate as well. And the other thing with watercolour, unlike acrylic, you can lift off. Well, a lot of the way I paint is about erasing back to the you know, the white of the canvas, um, which is how I do it. I put a, a burnt umber oil wash on and then I use erasers and things like that to rub back um, to the white of the canvas. So you can't, people, that's another thing people don't always know that you can erase oil paint. Um, I use typist erasers, I use normal erasers, putty erasers to just rub back to the white of the canvas. Um, but of course you can do something very similar with watercolour where you can put a wash on and then actually just use a damp brush to pull back and lift back. So it's, more similar to oil in a lot of ways than acrylics so because with acrylics if you put a wash on you stuck with that you can't lift back to you'd have to add white rather than erase back to the white of the canvas so different techniques so I still yeah. love oils if I'm really honest I get more of a, a much better underpainting using an oil and then erasing back because I like quite a detailed underpainting um, and you put the wash on there and then you'll just uh, use different tools q-tips erasers all sorts just to you know rub that back to the white and it's a bit light I suppose using charcoal is that you you're adding on and taking off to reveal a you know a one-toned um image such as so if I, yeah, I'll show you that one again. So you can see, you know, I've put a wash over everywhere and the lights have come back where I've erased them back um, to the, you know, to the white of the canvas. So I absolutely love that technique. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's very good for beginners as well. So, excuse me. Um, very, very good for beginners because, um, you know, they can work everything out at that stage and do all that before they have to worry about adding colour and things like that. So the underpainting technique is absolutely amazing for um you know for beginner artists to to learn and I do landscapes with it as well I don't just do um pets or portraits I've done landscapes with it I've done a wonderful cottage with it I've done all sorts of things with it you can let that dry and then you go over and add your colors on top and it just breaks the whole process down I've got quite a lot of videos actually on underpainting for free on my YouTube channel so uh, if anybody is interested go check those out so mm -hmm. well um do you have other hobbies outside of doing art well I would say no but I have <laughs> since September just I've started line dancing <laughs> don't <laughs> laugh it's, do you know it's one of them things that I have always really fancied having a go at and never found a, a local class um anyway we've we've managed to find one and I've been going there since September every week um, so I've been doing my line dancing and that's been fun there's actually a, a social event going on on Sunday sort of singers and you know country western singers and things like that come in and and people will be up dancing and things like I'm not very good at it I will be perfectly honest I'm still going one way when the class is going the other but I absolutely enjoy it and I love the the music and things so I did take Gary with me on the first day um, because I was a bit of a chicken I didn't want to go by myself um, but he came with me on the first day and he's never been since <laughs> but he is coming with me on Sunday to this social so uh, but yeah he will literally he absolutely hated it but I loved it so you know once I'd sort of broke the ice and thought yeah I can do this on my own I'm brave I'll be brave I'll go by myself so yeah that's what I'm doing sort of outside of art beyond that I am absolutely obsessed I watch YouTube I watch art videos all the time I'm constant of reading it's all art for me it literally is all art for me so you know I I just love it I love all of it mm -hmm. And line dancing is fun. You know, the it's nervousness fun. goes yes. away as soon as you start having fun with it anyway. Yeah, well, also, of course, not having the classes that I, I am reintroducing my portrait classes, actually. I have, um, in August, I've got, I've dropped it down to five, partly because of all my equipments took up half the room now. Um, so I've dropped it down to five students and I'm running, I won't be running them weekly, but probably every other month you know, sort of eight to 12 weeks, something like that, I'll run um, one of these three day portraits where it's either a pet or a portrait of the choice using this particular technique. So that's kind of nice to have humans back in the, you know, in the studio. And of course, I've got my ladies coming next week. But the line dancing came about because I was literally in here all the time on my own. And it can be quite, a, you know, I'm talking to a camera all day long um, and it can be quite isolating. So I thought, you know, I need to get out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the line dancing has kind of come from and I, I really do and I'm making some new friends and outside of the art world and it's kind of good fun so you know mm -hmm. and hopefully you know 10 years from now I might be really good at it <laughs> 
<laughs> but if I sort of apply the same rules as I've done for art and put me 10,000 hours in, I might, you know, I might actually get good at it. But at the moment, I've got two left feet. So, but, but I enjoy it. <laughs> And that's great. That's I'm happy that you found something else that you know is something <laughs> totally different. It, yeah, it keeps things interesting. Um, okay, so I have some bonus questions. <clears throat> In the world of art, is there a specific thing that you wish that you could figure out that you struggle with? Oh, mm, this is going to sound really arrogant. <laughs> no, because yeah. I will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's yes. like if there's something that I'm like. Oh, there was um, a, a, somebody doing dry brushing. It's one of the, I was watching it on YouTube and it's one of the Russian artists. Some of the Russian artists are amazing. Um, some amazing artwork comes from there. Um, I, but I was watching him do dry brushes this is quite a few years ago. And I obviously couldn't understand what was being said or couldn't really felt, but I just kept watching and watching and watching and then started practicing and practicing and experimenting and from there um I sort of started running I've not done any for a long time but doing dry brush techniques which is basically um using black oil paint on watercolor paper where you rub and again erase so it wasn't a million miles away from what I was doing anyway it was just a case of adapting some of these techniques and what have you and so no I would say no because I'm somebody who when I've seen something just gets totally tunnel visioned and we'll just stay on it until I've got my head around it or figured it out, you know? So no, okay. <laughs> and I don't mean that to be arrogant in any kind of way at all. No, I think you've earned your stripes. You have the right to say that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Bonus question. Number two, if you could meet any person living or dead, who it would be, who would it be and why? Oh, well, so I, I went to meet um, Jerry Arnell. Jerry Arnell in Oklahoma, he was on my bucket list. I've done that one. The one person that I really wanted to meet and has sadly passed is Wilson Bickford. Um, we were friends on Facebook, really chatty on Facebook. And it was one of them that I was like, I wanted to meet Robert Warren. I've met Robert and painted with him. I wanted to meet Jerry Yarnell and I've done that. And sadly, I, you know, I really always thought I'd be able to meet Wilson, but I was unable to do that. So that's, you know, that's probably the one I would put, you know, cause he was just such, he just seemed such a great guy and he was so friendly. And, you know, even from my early career, he was always super supportive. So he's been one of them that kind of helped me through and give me the thumbs up and the encouragement. So yeah, it's kind of sad that I've not been able to meet him. Mm -hmm. so I've, he heard, would, yeah. I've heard good things from a lot of people about him yeah um question number three bonus question number three where, <laughs> where do you think you get your original talent from uh, well my mum's very creative uh, my sister they're different they don't paint um my mum makes little um, dolls and things like that, like the polymer clay. She makes things from that. Um, my sister makes cards and things. I think it's always been in the family to some degree. So uh, I would say it's, you know, it's definitely from my mum's side. My dad was, I mean, my dad's no longer with us, but he was definitely not very uh, creative at all. So, but he did used to enjoy my paintings. He used to show off a little bit when I was younger. So yeah, I would say my mum. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, bonus. I had a whole pile of bonus questions for you. That's okay. okay. <laughs> bonus question number four. What do you think it is about you that draws people to you? Well, you said it earlier. It's the accent. It's obviously <laughs> the accent. <laughs> um, I get that comment. So when you, I love your accent. So uh, it must be that. <laughs> I actually think if I'm really, really honest, I think I am quite deliberate in my teaching. Um, I don't ever rush through it. I don't ever assume. And the way I speak, I get a lot of people saying the way you deliver your content is really, really good. And I can, that that's how I'm being able to pick things up. And especially now I'm able to set things up how I want, I, how I would want to see it, um, like the second camera angle and things like that. You know, I have a one on the painting, one on my palette, a second camera angle. So if I'm holding the brush, for example, when you're holding the brush to do a petal, sometimes the camera is just blocking you know so I need to be able to show them that I'm right on that chiseled edge and I'm deliberate so for me other than the accent I think it's the fact that I am very very and again I hate saying but I feel like I, my strength is the teaching I am good at the teaching it is where I'm the most passionate you know I don't sell a lot of paintings for me. I do commission work but I don't sell a lot of the paintings I actually have them breeding here so if anybody does want to buy them I do have a shop <laughs> Um, but I don't focus on it, you see. So I focus on the teaching. So, you know, there's only so many hats you can wear. 
Um, and I think if you were doing paintings and then trying to promote an Etsy shop or things like that, whereas I just don't focus on that at the moment, I'm kind of hoping one day someone will just take it all and go sort it for me. <laughs> but I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I have that thought all the time. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any sort of final thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Um, no, not really, Gabby. I feel like you've kind of asked everything and covered everything so um no hopefully people enjoy uh, the interview i try to be as as real as possible <laughs> you know i do talk, once i get going i can talk especially when it's to do with art i can talk i'm most of the time pretty shy but once i get on the art subject then uh, you know i can be well known for being chatty <laughs> so hopefully uh, i've uh, i've answered everything you need me to answer yes um where can people find you so yeah they can find me oh i've done all this you know on my stream deck <laughs> They can find me at Mazart Academy. Um, that's where the workshops are. Or MazartStudio.com um, is where my shop and things like that are. So, you know, if you put Marion Dutton in the internet, I am actually everywhere. So, and same with YouTube. You can find me on YouTube under Mazart Studio or Marion Dutton. You'll find me under there as well. So, I've got a lot of stuff on YouTube. Some nice, some good content on there for free. Um, there's quite a lot of freebies as well on my academy. Um, but of course, um, you can either subscribe to my academy or you can buy classes as a one-time purchase. It really does depend on what people, um, you know, how people want to consume the content. So, but yes. Awesome. Well, thank you a million for coming on and doing this with me. Yeah. It has been so much fun. It's, it's been a pleasure. It really has. And again, it's I've enjoyed sort of watching some of the other. I enjoyed JD's and Dale Cullen's interview and obviously um, Kevin Hill. That was great to see him on there as well. And he's such a great guy. Um, so I've been watching him literally from being 16 when he was sort of on. And he's another person. So going back to who would I like to meet, I would love to paint with Kevin at some point. So um, for the future. But thank you very much for having me on here. I think it's wonderful that you're giving spotlight to different artists and and uh, I'm looking forward to sort of sharing this on my own channel as well and directing people over to your channel because I think it's great what you're doing and you know giving people an opportunity to uh, say what they're doing as well so yeah. well done on you <laughs> thank you so much that means a lot coming from you yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think that's it for our show today, guys. If you have any questions or comments, put it in the comment section of the video. We'll do our best to address them. Again, I'm Gabby. This is Marion. And I'm Marion. <laughs> yeah. And until next time, I really do hope that you guys fall in love with art just as much as we have. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.